welcome I'm Akosi Network. Welcome to the channel, guys. Thank you, thank you to those who have subscribed and thank you to those who just watch and comment, etc. But please, guys, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, tell me anything you want to talk about. And if it's an interesting topic, I'll also jump on and put it on. But thank you and please continue to subscribe. Like I always say, there's 88% of you who continue to watch the channel, but you're not subscribed. Guys, please subscribe. It helps the channel grow and it helps us grow bigger. But thank you to those who have subscribed. You are the best. 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 But yeah, guys, today we chat about the TS Galaxy coach, what he said. And also we talk about Molefe Nzeki. Molefe Nzeki was ch chatting in the uh, Kaling Black Label Cup. And Molefe Nzeki basically in this point, he was talking about Luke Fleurs. So when he was chatting about Luke Fleurs, he just gave an update as to what was happening with Luke Fleurs. Um, why is he still like training, etc, etc. And... With that, you know what, before I get to that story, let me go to that Ramovic story. Guys, the Ramovic story is simple. So Ramovic uh, was also talking at that uh, Culling Black Label Cup to journalists. And when they asked him, they were like, hey, Ramovic, Baba, what is happening? What do you think the league needs? Like, what must happen with Sundance? And then Ramovic made it clear. Ramovic said, the big teams, and he also tried to include himself, but he was like, actually... Orlando Pirates and KZ Chiefs must not fight to be number two in the league. Because he was like, right now, they are not fighting to be the, the champions of the league. They are leaving it to Sundowns because they have already accepted it. Sundowns has money. Sundowns can have 20 coaches. Sundowns can have uh, 20 whatever. Sundowns can bring players from South America and give them salary zomshava and we can't do that. And they've accepted that that is where they, they are going to land, that they can't do anything. But that's not what the case is with um, Uramovic. Ramovic said Chiefs and Pirates are able to defeat Sundowns and they have the money and power to build enough to beat Sundowns, etc. So he was like, it's in their hands to beat Mamilodi Sundowns and they should be beating them. Not good they they can. He said they should. So he was like, this thing of having a one league winner all the years is not right. And basically, Chiefs and Pirates need to dethrone uh, Mamilodi Sundowns. And what do I think of that? Obvious, it's true. But the thing is that as much as us as fans, you and me who are listening to this, we agree this has not been different from even the time Pizzo was here. We all knew that the team, actually, let me tell, let me be honest with you guys. The one team that I always believe can beat Sundowns in their sleep is Kaiser Chiefs. Because me, I don't believe that there's a team that is bigger than Kaiser Chiefs. And I don't believe that there's a team that can just wake up every second Sunday and defeat Kaiser Chiefs. But... At the same time, I have to be honest. And when I say I have to be honest, I have to say management has failed us. And in order to beat Sundowns in the future, it won't happen today. Why do I say this? Let me, let me just let you guys know. Chiefs devalued what the shirt means. When I say Chiefs devalued what the shirt means, before 2010, before 2010, the years before that, the 90s, the 80s, and the 70s, Wearing a Chiefs jersey did not go to anyone. Like, if you said you got signed by Chiefs, you honestly had to be the best player in the free, in freaking Africa. Like, that is the best way I can put it. You had to be the best player in Africa. It's like South Africa sometimes is small waters. You have to be the best player in Africa. Before you even... Like, no one... Today, when someone does a rumor about Keza Chiefs, You'll find people are saying a rumor like, uh, I don't know what player I can make an example. Guti, this player has been linked to Chiefs. In the past, let me tell you guys, in the past, publications, people would laugh at newspapers or whatever. Whoever made a link of a player that did not match Chiefs quality to Chiefs, people would not trust that paper ever again. That people would go out of business. Because in the past, if the player is not... On the level of John Shoes Mushew, Dr. Kumalu, etc. The likes of Pules, the likes of uh, Sean Bartlett, etc. etc. If your player did not have that kind of presence and value, Chiefs was known as a national team team. Meaning, 
if you come to Chiefs, know that you are a national team player. But after 2010, and Bobby was continuing his buy one, get one free, all of that changed and anyone could put on a shirt. Let me tell you, Chiefs has gone through a process where we have signed players like Kowati. We have signed players like Nangi. We have signed players like Oage. Guys, we have signed players like U Innocent, what is it, Mkabel or whatever, who has never, didn't even play one game for Chiefs. We have signed players like Ujaiye, who was already bad at Cape Town City, but Chiefs decided, no, he's bad at Cape Town City, but yeah, he will be good. This guy was not exactly amazing at Vets and at um, Cape Town City. He was good enough for those teams, but not Chiefs. But Chiefs decided to sign him because we are kids of Chiefs that just signs any Tom Dick and Harry. So, it's things like that that we lost our couch. Number two, we lost coaching. So the coaching was an issue, a very big one. Coaching was a very big issue. We did not have coaches with philosophy. We got coaches about Shayum Kitmas Kitas Began. So in the past, ever since Miriam Dob came to South Africa, we have had Miriam Dob as the coach. We have had Stuart Baxter as the coach. All of these coaches have the one Makitas Began mentality, and it's the most irritating thing because it it takes away quality. Minunguti, today our number 10s must play like, like Abazi Bola. You know when you're growing up and there's that kid who is the fastest in the team and everyone thinks Guti, this kid is actually the best player. But he's not good. He's just faster than us. Then time goes and now we're all starting to catch up to this guy in speed. We are growing into our bodies, etc. Then this guy is all of a second Sunday and come. And then he's like, but he's still fast, guys. How is he and come? It's like, because he was never good. He just knew how to run. But like when it comes to solving issues in the field, he does not know. And that is what Chiefs is doing now. That is why I always still today, and I know a lot of people disagree with me. Bernard Parker was good as a striker, but the moment he lost his striking ability, he became an energizer bunny, meaning that he was not creating goals. He was not scoring goals even as a midfielder. He was just the guy who was all over the field. And because he's all over the field, it gives you the illusion that he's doing something. Same with Matt sometimes. Matt, because he can be all over the field, it gives people the sense that Matt is doing everything. But no, he's not doing his embobble most of the times, but like Matt, yeah, let's not go into Matt. But yeah, guys, the next topic before I close it off is the Luke Flows one. I just want to read you. So this is what Mulefin Zeki said about Luke Flows. said, Luke Flows has been doing very well. And the reason we brought him closer to us is to do a proper assessment. So they are still trying to assess Luke Flows. And then says, we all know that Luke is a quality player, but I think the process is going and sooner we will be able to be in touch with him and his representatives. And that is where the decision will be. But one thing I can say is that Luke is still training with us. Whether we will sign him or not is still a bit of a classified information, but the young man is still with us. To close this off, what this for, for me tells me is that Molefin Tziki Yena, I, he is ready to sign the boy. The issue is the coaches around him. When I say the, the people around him, because for me, what Molefin Tziki has been saying in interviews has already told me that Molefi is already ready to sign this boy. So the issue is probably Arthur Zwani. The issue is probably Dylan Shepard. The issue is probably Keza Mutaum Jr. The issue is probably Bobby. Those guys are still not sure about Luke because they are saying, if, if what will, what call, what benefit will the, having this guy give us in the next two to three years? And that is how they are viewing it. They're like, is he worth the signing? And it's like, will he compete to be in the starting lineup? Because who are the centre backs now? It's Quinica. It's uh, like let's start with the starting one. It's Msimango. Titlokwe, Ngobo, Quinica, those are the top four. And then coming behind them is going to be Aiden McCarthy and Ukumet. That's the uh, DDC uh, players. You see, already those guys are there and the young ones are already fighting to be in the first team. And then after that, you're going to sign Luke Flues, meaning that Luke Flues has to be good enough to dethrone Titlokwe, dethrone Msimango, uh, 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 
uh, Quinica, and the young ones still have to fight. So let's say he still has to dethrone the top four. So it's that. So what I think is happening is that they are possibly also trying to see how well Uluk Flores actually does in defensive midfield roles because he can play that position. So I think they're also assessing his defensive midfielder um, like abilities to see what he, okay, maybe he will, we will use him as a versatile defend, uh, de center back slash defensive midfielder, etc. And maybe they're also trying to just also assess is he, his injuries, etc. And can he... Uh, adapt to the load and also i think another thing they probably still assessing is mentality to be like is he in the right headspace because that's always important but yeah guys please subscribe to the channel that's what i have today and let me know what you think